Hey guys, Janet here at the 4-H office. So for our fun Friday activity, what we're going to do is we're going to talk tummies today and more specifically rumens. Rumens are the biggest chamber in your ruminants and your ruminants are a four chambered, four stomach chambered animal. Um, most of you would know a ruminant if you saw it. It would be a dairy cow, a beef cow, sheep, or a goat. Those are our most common ag ruminants that we have on our farms today. And what really makes them really super cool and neat is that ruminants can take feed and forages that us as humans can't digest. So they eat that and then they turn it into meat and milk for us to use. But how do they do that? Can they do that on their own? No, 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 no. They need their rumen, their biggest chamber of their stomach. So ruminants with their four chambered stomach, they have the omasum, the abomasum, the rumen, and the reticulum. And those chambers all work together to process feed and forages like hay samples um, and their TMR and to convert it into products that we can use. So when a ruminant, your sheep, your goat, or your cattle eat, what they do is they just gobble, 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 gobble. They use their tongues to push everything in, they swallow it, and it goes to their rumen, the largest chamber in their stomach. So from the rumen, it hangs out there for a while. There are things in the rumen that are called microbes, which are little fungi, bacteria, protozoa that hang out and actually digest the feed, start the digestion process for our ruminants. And what happens then is when the cow, the sheep, the goat is done eating, they kind of lay down or they'll stand around and they'll bring their cud back up, which is what we call the feed bolus that's been in their stomach. They bring that back up and they start chewing it. So you might see your animal just mm, mm, mm. They're actually chewing the feed that they've eaten. Once they chew it, and they're also chewing those little microbes that are in there because those microbes are attached to the feed, they come back up. So they chew and then they swallow it again. And when they swallow it again, it goes into the reticulum, which is the honeycomb area of the stomach. So let me show you, I'm throwing around a lot of big terms um, we'll talk diagram here. So I've got my goat, I've got my digestive system. Um, and as you can see, we have the mouth, the esophagus, which is where the animal swallows and brings up their cud. They have their reticulum, which is a little pouch here. This is actually the place that an animal will get hardware. And hardware is when an animal eats a piece of metal it may be mixed in the feed, it could have fallen off the mixer wagon, could have been in a bale of hay, um, or they could have just been chewing on the side of the barn, who knows, um, especially with goats. So they swallow a piece of metal, it goes into this little chamber of the stomach, and it can actually poke a hole through that chamber. If that happens, that piece of metal sticking through the hole can actually puncture the heart or cause just an infection in the body cavity because all those stomach juices come out. So with our cattle, we usually put a magnet down them. We give them a cow magnet um, in, a, in a bolus gun, a pill gun, and it just goes down their throat and it stays right here in the reticulum to collect the metal pieces to keep our animals healthy. Um, the metal pieces stick to the magnet and then they don't poke out and cause hardware disease. The biggest chamber is the rumen, which is right here. Um, that in a cow can hold about 35 to 45 gallons. Not quite as much in our sheep and goats because their body capacity just isn't as big to hold all that liquid and, and feed. So we have our rumen, which is our fermentation vat. Um, there's no oxygen, we've got our microbes, and all the feed is really starting to get broken down. In our rumen, we actually have three layers. And we're actually gonna build a rumen today but our three layers in our rumen, we have gas on top, we have our floating mat here in the middle, and then on the bottom is our liquid and some of the smaller pieces of feed that would have fallen down. So, ruminants, super, super cool with their rumen. From there, the feed will go to the omasum, and this is called the many plies. It actually looks like pages in a book. And what that does is the feed gets in these pages, these folds of the stomach, the stomach squeezes them, squeezes the feed, squeezes water out so it's drier. 
So, from the omasum, our next stop in our digestion journey is the abomasum, which is the true stomach, which is like our tummies. We have abomasums. This is where the cow, the sheep, the goat do their own digestion and break down the feed for themselves, not relying on the microbes. From there, we go to the small intestine, the large intestine, and then out as manure. Pretty cool process, takes about two days for what they eat to get through them, depending on how much fiber is in your feed. If you have a lot of fiber, digestion is a lot slower, it takes longer for that feed to get out. But what's really, really cool is the order that you feed an animal. Now, if you're sitting there saying, I wish mom and dad would give me my cookies and my ice cream first, that's not really healthy for you. And us giving our animals their grain, their um, pellets, their cake, whatever you want to call it, if we give that to them first, they're going to eat it, they're going to eat it all up, clean it up, but they're not going to feel good later. Just like if we had our ice cream and our cookies before dinner. Yeah, it would taste great, but we probably wouldn't feel too good later on. So, people have developed a way to feed animals, whether it's component feeding, which means you give them their hay, and then you'll give them their grain and their corn silage um, separately, or they create a TMR, which is a total mix ration, which is everything thrown into one mix. So it would be like having your dinner plate and you have your steak and your broccoli and your macaroni and cheese separate on the plate, or we're gonna make a TMR. We're going to give you a casserole with hamburger and mixed vegetables and maybe some tater tots and cheese thrown on top. That's your TMR. That is similar to what we feed our animals when we make a TMR. Everything is in that one dish waiting for you to eat it all at once. So today we're going to talk rumens because rumens are really, really super cool. I have here, and this is a great opportunity. You guys can build your own rumens at home. Makes a great club day presentation. Um, also a nice club talk. Hint, hint, hint. So to make this project, you're going to need a clear bowl. Um, plastic is best. You can use a tote as well. I have a glass one here. I have it filled half full of water and this is actually my rumen. I have my stomach fluid on the bottom. I'm going to put in my feed to create the mat in the middle and then at the top will be my gases which we don't normally see. So cows in their, well all ruminants in their stomachs have a lot of methane um, which is a really they burp a lot, they make a lot of methane, they're gassy, so they will be burping. If a cow or an animal doesn't burp, that's not a good sign, they're plugged up somewhere. So, create our rumen, create our fluid. What you can do, and this is a neat idea, you can actually switch it up. We are going to build the rumen today and we're going to feed in the correct order. What we're going to do is we're going to feed component style, which means I'm going to feed each component separately and we'll start with our long hay. So our long hay, very lightweight, long particle size. As a cow chews or, or a goat or a sheep chews, they will mechanically, with their teeth, physically, mechanically break down this hay into smaller pieces. But the hay will be longer than our grain and will actually float to start our room and fiber mat. Following that, I'm going to add a little bit of um, corn silage to my ration. I'm going to just sprinkle it on. Now, your corn silage, your TMR, it's already been processed, shorter pieces. If you can see in our jar, and this is really, really cool in this bowl here, you can see the smaller, the fines, not catching on our hay, but actually sinking down into our rumen. And that is not a good sign. Rumens. Awesome. They look like shag carpeting. They've got all these little papillae that are outgrowths of skin. So when a, a ruminant is born, stomach totally smooth. They don't have papillae. As we start feeding grain, the propionic acid or one of the acids that they make actually stimulates the skin to grow these little projectiles into the wall of the stomach and they're called papillae. Now what these papillae do is increase the surface area because if I show you my hand and it's smooth, not as much surface area, but if I open up my fingers, I have more area on my hand. That's what papillae are. They're more area in the rumen to increase digestion, to increase absorption of nutrients. But if we take a lot of corn, 
or anything that's really, really super fine, um, ground corn or cornmeal or something like that, and we just feed them that without creating this fiber mat. If you look, when you create your own rumen, you'll see there's a ton of small little particles at the bottom. They actually fall through into our papillae, okay, and they will get in there, they don't get out. They start burning the skin, and what they do is they will burn those papillae off. Once you've lost these papillae, you've lost the ability to do all this digestion. So, when it gets burned off, you have a smooth, flat stomach surface. The papillae will never grow back. Once you've damaged the stomach lining, the rumen lining, it's damaged for life. It never comes back. That's why it's really super important to balance our animal's rations and to feed them the right amount of feed and the right amount of particle length, length of their feed to ensure that they have their fiber mat here in their rumen and also stimulate cud chewing. If you eat, let's say, you eat raw broccoli, that takes a lot to chew, right? But if I was to give you um, Skittles, you can chew those real easy. It doesn't require a lot of chewing, a lot of saliva making. Um, you're not quite as healthy. So that's the same as with our sheep, our goats, and our cattle. We really need to take a look at what we're feeding, the length of it, and the order that we feed them in to ensure that they're healthy. So with your rumen, you can also take different feeds. Like if you have a sweet feed, you can drop some of that in see how it floats or how it sinks. If it starts breaking apart, what's happening? Um, if you wanted to change this experiment up a little bit and leave it on the counter, if it's okay with mom and dad, you can actually use a little bit of vinegar because vinegar is a little bit acidic. It's a light acid um, that would mimic the rumen contents, the rumen fluid, and you could see the feed start to break down. Now, if you want to do this experiment and you don't have feed samples, Feel free to use whatever you have in the kitchen. Think creatively. Do you have box cereal? Do you have rice? Do you have cornmeal, flour, vegetables, lettuce? You can make your own rumen using what you have at home.